is slow because the steps are just it's the same process, but the solving for y is a little bit more involved than it was with the linear equations. Okay, so same thing, we switch x and y. We're trying to get y by itself. Right now it's stuck in the denominator. So to get it out of the denominator, our only option is to multiply it by both sides. Okay, that'll make it go away on the right side. Now, I'm not going to distribute the x times y minus 2. I'm going to leave it as x times y minus 2. I'm trying to get y by itself. So my next step is going to be to divide by that x that's in front. We're almost there. What do we have to do to get y by itself? Add 2. Now, we don't change the rational expression there. 5 over x, it stays. So f inverse of x is equal to 5 over x plus 2. Make sure that plus 2 is clearly separate from the 5 over x. That's a rational function too, isn't it? You got x in the denominator. So apparently the inverse of a rational is a rational. To get b. Okay. This one looks like the answer we just got. So maybe its answer is going to look like the first problem that we did. Let's see. We've got x is equal to 7 over y plus 4. That plus 4 is not a part of that rational expression. It's there on the end. So I'm going to start by subtracting the 4. That y is in the denominator again. So the only way to get it out is to multiply by it. Make sure you put parentheses around the x minus 4 when you do that. Just like on the last problem, we're not going to multiply it out because we're getting ready to turn back around and divide by the x minus 4. So y is by itself. So g inverse of x is equal to 7 over x minus 4. Okay, let's do another one. I know this is a little weird. 7 over x plus 4. Switch x and y. x is equal to 7 over y plus 4. y is stuck in the denominator. So we get it out of the denominator by multiplying. Okay, what's next? Divide by x. And then we can subtract the 4. And y is by itself, so that means h inverse of x is equal to 7 over x minus 4. Now, let me give you just a little peek at how you can check this in your calculator. Okay, let's try by putting... Uh, put the original equation in y1, 7 over, we have to put x plus 4 in parentheses. We have to put x plus 4 in parentheses. Uh, put your inverse in y2. You don't have to put the 7 over x in parentheses, but it can't hurt. 7 over x minus 4. And I'm going to go to the table. 
Now, I'm not expecting the y values to be the same here because um, we're talking about these being inverses. We're not saying that they're equal to each other. These two equations are not equal to each other. We're checking to see if they're inverses. Well, one of the properties of inverses says that we switch x and y. So let's look for some homework. Okay? When x is 3, the original function has a y value of 1. So if we switch that, that says when x is 1, the inverse should have a y value of 3. We can confirm it with a couple other points if you want to. Uh, find another whole number. Um, negative 1, negative 11. So that means negative 11 should have a y value of negative 1 for the original. And it does. Okay, let's we'll see how that works. The x's and y's take place. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's look at, or excuse me, two more. Let's look at D. J of x is equal to 7 over x. Okay, we're going to switch x and y. We've got to get y out of the denominator, so we multiply both sides by y. And we're trying to get y by itself, so then we divide by x. So y is equal to 7 over x. Wasn't that my original function? Okay. It's very rare, but there are a few functions who are their own inverse. Kind of a weird thought, but there are a few functions who are their own inverse. And this is one. Okay. Let's look at an example E. K of x is equal to x squared, and in parentheses they have for x is greater than 0. They're restricting the domain here so that the inverse will be considered a function. Okay, this is what we were looking at uh, with graph number three here. Same idea. Graph number three was just shifted over so that its line of symmetry was at three instead of at zero. But it's the same idea. Okay, they're just restricting the domain so the inverse will be a function. So, let's switch x and y. X is equal to Y squared. Well, what's the opposite of squaring something? The square root. So we take the square root of our signs. So that says the square root of X is equal to Y. So that means K inverse of X is the square root of X. Now, um, I've always emphasized to you that when you take the square root, you include the positive and the negative. We do not include the positive and the negative here because of this restriction at the very beginning. Since x is greater than 0, that means the range of the inverse is going to be y is greater than 0. So we only need to consider the positive square root of x. Now, just as a little side note, if the original problem had looked like this, if it had said k of x is equal to x squared, x is less than 0, then its inverse would be the negative square root of x, because the range here would be y is less than 0. No, the negative is outside the square root. If it's inside, then that's where the imaginary thing comes from. But yeah, okay. So this is all coming from when you take a square root, you're supposed to include positive and the negative, but in order for it to be a function, you either consider the positive or you consider the negative depending on how it was restricted at the beginning. But this is also an important thought. The domain of the original becomes the range of the inverse. You just, domain has x's, range has y's. Okay, so domain of the original 
is the range of the inverse. That's an important idea. The name of the original is the range of the inverse and vice versa. The range of the original will be the domain of the inverse. X's and Y's change, so domain and range switch places. Uh, let me add one more example to this. Uh, let's say g of x is equal to x cubed minus 5. Okay, g of x is equal to x cubed minus 5. So if we were trying to find the inverse of this, we switch x and y. We're trying to solve for y. So we start by adding 5 to both sides. x plus 5 is equal to y cubed. Well, the opposite of cubing something would be the cubed root. Okay, so the inverse of this function is the cube root of x plus 5. Notice I'm very careful uh, to make sure that my cube root extends all the way over um, to include the 5. Because if there was just a slight difference in this, say this had been x minus 5 cubed, and we were trying to find that inverse, what would we do first? Would we add 5 like we just did? Yeah. No, because it's stuck inside the root. we got to take the cubed root first. So this one, the cubed root is only on the x. Then we would add the 5 to the end. Okay, the order of all this really does matter. Okay, that function is pretty significantly different from the other one. If you don't believe me, graph them. Okay. Uh, y equals, actually I'm going to do it for you, math, cube root is number 4, x plus 5. Math, cube root of x, that's the only thing under the cube root, so we close the parentheses and then add 5. Yes, they have the same general shape, but their position in the xy plane is very different. Okay, two significantly different functions. Same base function, the cube root, but very different positions here. Okay, make sense? Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes they will just give you a table or they'll just give you a graph. They won't give you the function, and they'll ask you some questions about the inverse. So I'm actually going to start with the uh, graph first, as opposed to the table, because I think the graph makes more sense. So um, we've got um, we've got these points that are plotted here. And we want to plot the points for the inverse. Okay, we want to plot the points for the inverse. So, if negative 5, negative 3 is a point on our original, the inverse switches x and y. So that means the point negative 3, negative 5 is going to be on the inverse. Negative 2 negative 1 is on the original. So switch x and y, negative 1, negative 2 is on the inverse. And I'm just checking them off to make sure I get them all. Negative 4, 0, switch x and y. 0, negative 4 is on the inverse. Negative 3, 1, switch x and y. 1, negative 3 